Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel, and this is part four of the article in Yes Magazine by Ms. Ellen Brown on how cash-starved states can create their own credit by starting up a bank of California or a bank of Michigan like they have a bank in North Dakota. So I suggested that Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, girly man governor, compared to Governor Macho Man Roberto Romero in Salta Province in Argentina, who paid all his employees with small denomination bonds rather than lay them off. I suggested Arnold do the same. He hasn't. And now these people are trying to work on Governor Muscle Brain. President Obama has also acknowledged that banks create money through what he calls the multiplier effect. But he gets it wrong, too. In a speech to Georgetown University on April 14th, he said, Although there are a lot of Americans who understandably think the government money would be better spent going directly to families and businesses instead of banks, where's our bailout, they asked, the truth is that a dollar of capital in a bank can actually result in eight or ten dollars of loans to families and business, a multiplier effect that can ultimately lead to faster pace of economic growth. And of course, that's false. A ten dollar, a dollar deposit in the bank, they can only lend out ninety cents. It's a dollar of new reserves, a brand new dollar that can be multiplied over and over for ten, but not a standard dollar that's already existing that's being deposited. They can only lend out 90 cents. But it goes to show when Obama's got it right and even Ms. Brown's, I mean, got it wrong and even Ms. Brown's got it wrong, how tricky the double think of the banking system is. Money in a government-owned bank could give us the best of both worlds. We could have all the credit-generating advantages of private banks without the baggage cluttering up the books of the Wall Street giants, including bad derivatives bets, unmarketable collateralized debt obligations, mark-to-market accounting issues, oversized CEO salaries and bonuses, and shareholders expecting a sizable cut of the profits. A state could deposit its vast revenues in its own state bank and proceed to fan them into eight to ten times their face value. Not only would it have its own credit machine, but it would control the loan terms. The state could lend at a half a percent to itself and to municipal governments, rolling the loans over as needed until the revenues had been generated to pay them off. According to Professor Margaret Kennedy in her 1995 book, Interest and Inflation-Free Money, a lot earlier than 95, interest composes on average fully half the cost of every public project. Half goes in debt service, and only half in project service. Cutting costs by 50% could make currently unsustainable projects such as low-cost housing, alternative energy, energy development, and infrastructure construction not only sustainable, but actually profitable for the government. If all this seems too radical and unprecedented to venture into, consider that one state has had its own bank for 90 years, and it has not only escaped the credit crunch, but is doing remarkably well. The Innovative Bank of North Dakota. Only three of 50 states are now solvent. Oh, they lost one since the previous article. Meaning that they have the revenues to meet their state budgets, and one of them is North Dakota. It's an unlikely candidate for the distinction. It is a sparsely populated state with fewer than 700,000 people, located in isolated farming communities afflicted with cold weather. And yet, since 2000, the state GNP's grown 56%, personal income's grown 43%, wages have grown 34%. The state not only has no funding issues, but this year it actually has a budget surplus of 1.2 billion, the largest it has ever had. And I don't mind repeating that, because it's good news. North Dakota boasts the only state-owned bank in the nation. The Bank of North Dakota was established by the state legislature in 1919, specifically to free farmers and small business from the clutches of out-of-state bankers. The bank's stated mission is to deliver sound services, blah, blah, blah. We heard this, and the state must deposit all funds in the bank, and it pays a competitive interest rate. Ooh, to the state treasurer. Ah, the state, rather than the FDIC, guarantees the bank deposits, which are plowed back into the state in the form of loans. The bank's return on equity is about 25%, and it pays a hefty dividend to the state, which is expected to exceed $60 million this year. In the last decade, the Bank of North Dakota has turned back a third of a trillion dollars to the state's general fund offsetting taxes. The former president of the Bank of Nova Scotia is now the, ah, the Bank of North Dakota is now the state's governor. 
The Bank of North Dakota avoids rivalry with private banks by partnering with them. Most lending is originated by a local bank. The Bank of North Dakota then comes in to participate in the loan, share risk, and buy down the interest rate. The Bank of North Dakota provides a secondary market for real estate loans, which it buys from local banks. Its residential loan portfolio is now $500 billion to $600 billion. Guarantees are also provided for entrepreneurial startups, and the Bank of North Dakota has ample money to lend to students, over 184,000 outstanding loans. It purchases municipal bonds from public institutions. It backs loans made to new farmers at 1% interest. Hey, farmers of the states, you're getting raped compared to these boys, aren't you? The Bank of Nova Scotia also has a well-funded disaster loan program, which helps explain how Fargo, when struck by a disastrous flood recently, managed to avoid the devastation suffered by New Orleans in similar circumstances. North Dakota has also managed to avoid the credit freeze through the simple expedient of creating its own credit. It has led the nation in establishing trade state economic sovereignty, in California and other states, workers in factories are sitting idle because the private credit system has failed. An injection of new money from a system of publicly owned banks on a model of the Bank of North Dakota could thaw the credit freeze and bring spring to the markets once again. So, Miss Ellen Brown, good for you. And this is the end of the article in Yes Magazine by Miss Ellen Brown, where she did a wonderful job explaining how the Bank of California could be founded by Governor Schwarzenegger, and it could work just like the Bank of North Dakota to give everybody a job and save the state all of that interest that they're wasting right now. And let's hope she and her friends have some kind of an effect, because like she pointed out, in California, they can have referenda. So someone could put the suggestion that they charter a Bank of California, put it to a vote, and have it done, and save themselves. It might take a long time, though. So there may be a lot of sad and broken, unemployed, and dead people before then, but what do you want? you got a muscle man for a governor, and it's going to take a long time to put, penetrate all that muscle in Governor Musclehead's brain.